Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dutchy Gaming and a new video on the channel going over why I'm really excited for the new endgame of Path of Exile 2 and very briefly what mechanics I tend to focus on. The first thing I like about the new system is that it's unending. So you can't repeat maps, you have to move on to new ones and then eventually move on to new areas. The cycle in Path of Exile 1 is you find one to two maps you like running, maybe even one, and then you just run nothing but those maps over and over and over again. And it does get quite stale. The problem in Path of Exile 1 is you can choose to run whatever maps you want for as long as you want. And a lot of the maps in Path of Exile 1 have really bad layouts. It's yet to be seen what they're like in Path of Exile 2, but everything that I've seen so far looks really, really positive. The other plus for me is that bosses only appear in one of four maps and they're indicated to show where they are. For people that know my content and the way I play Path of Exile, I like to map. I'm not a massive fan of uh, single target boss fights. So it's great for me. If I want my character to just map, I can avoid the bosses where possible. I'm obviously going to jump in and do bosses. I'm not going to ignore them totally, but it gives me the regency to decide what I want to do. And I'm really a massive fan of that. I will jump in and take on bosses every now and again because I want to see how my character fares against that content. Another change I really like and I think is really going to benefit new players is that you can choose your map tier. So let's say you're progressing through, you've got level 9 and 10 waystones, but you come across a map that looks a bit difficult because it's maybe got a mechanic and you haven't done before, you can put in a lower tier stone and you can run it at a lower tier. This is also good because some mechanics in Path of Exile are notoriously more difficult than others. I'm looking at Essences as an example. Now hopefully they're tuned down a bit from Path of Exile 1, but if you juice your map and you get an Essence in a tier 16 map, it can be like taking on a pinnacle boss. Being able to pick and choose your difficulty, knowing what encounters are in the map, I think is really, really good. Especially if essences work similar to the do in Path of Exile 1 where the better ones start appearing at a minimum uh, tier. You can just put in that tier of stone and then you can run, get your essences, complete the map and get any other loot that you've got. I do really like that and I think it's a good way to get into new mechanics that maybe you haven't done. And I think it's very, very beginner friendly. Maybe at the beginning people just want to stay in lower tier maps. If you play Path of Exile 1, you can do that but you're stuck running the same 4-8 to eight maps over and over again. A, it can get really tedious. B, the majority of those maps are probably horrible enclosed layouts. In Path of Exile 2, you can pick what biomes you want to go to, what maps you want to run, and what tier of those maps you want to run. I really like the fact that there's going to be differing levels of pinnacle content. If we take the reveal for Breach, for example, I said there's different levels of breaches that you can go into, and you need to kill the boss at the higher level to get the better rewards. But what it allows you to do is it interact with these mechanics earlier. The issue I have in Path of Exile 1 is that a lot of these mechanics are just one tier of difficulty and it is quite difficult. So you might be weeks into a league before you can interact with these mechanics and new players maybe never even get to try them. Take Simulacrum for example, even if you have an amazing character, if it's not suited to Simulacrums in POE 1, you won't complete them and they can be really, really frustrating. Now, only Breach has been shown in terms of the different tiers, but I would hope in Simulacrum operates the same way because you need to complete them to get points into your Delirium Tree. It would be very, very harsh for them to say this is the highest level zone and you need to complete it to get one point because by the time you complete that, you should be able to do all of the Delirium content with all of the tree specced out. So I'm hoping there are different levels for all the different pinnacle content and not just Breach. The other thing I like is the way they've tied rewards to end game content. Looking at it, there isn't really any mechanics that you can run that don't have items that are going to be profitable and worth picking up. I love the fact that they've moved oils to delirium and they sort of work as a combined delirium orb. You can get things like runes from ritual. Just every mechanic has something that nearly every player is going to want at some point. So it shouldn't mean that there's those odd mechanics that unless you get your jackpot item, you're going to lose or not make any currency. This is also even better when combined with the currency exchange because all of these keys, fragments, currencies that drop are going to be tradable on the exchange and that is how I like to trade. After being introduced to the currency exchange this league on Path of Exile 1, I very very rarely traded on trade unless I had a rare item that I wanted to buy, a unique I wanted to buy or if I needed to buy maps which I don't think I ever did. I also think maps might make their way into the exchange whether it's at early access because of the way they're done now. You basically just get a tier 1 stone or you get a tier 3 stone. And I think if they're uncrafted, I see no reason they can't put them into the exchange. I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into selling and buying on the currency exchange again. There will be a video coming in the future for new players. 
going around the currency exchange. But I don't want to bring one out before the game's even out because some players might take a week before they even need to use that mechanic. So I'd rather wait a bit later on to bring the video out and just to make sure that nothing has changed. And lastly, my two favorite mechanics from Path of XR1 have made it over to the early access and that is Essences and Delirium. These are two areas I love farming in Path of XR1 for two reasons. One, the rewards are pretty decent and easy to liquidate on the exchange. And two, they don't really slow your map completion time down. I'm not a massive fan of going into a map or a zone and spending 10 minutes completing various mechanics. I'd rather go in, do the map in like two to four minutes, get the mechanics completed and get out. Now we don't know what sort of time it's gonna to take to complete a zone in Path of XR2, but I do know that adding things in like Expedition and Breach is going to slow it down and it's not something I really enjoy doing. So the fact that Essences and Delirium are both back means I can concentrate on them when I first get to Endgame. And that's what I plan to do. I plan to basically hunt down Essence maps and Delirium maps and run them as often as I can. I think the Distilled Emotions are going to be in really high demand. They'll also be used later on for like juicing maps, but probably not uh, in the first few weeks. And I just like the mechanic of Delirium, despite the fact it is very, very dangerous. Essences, I think, are going to be key to crafting nearly every item early to mid game. So they're always, always going to be in demand. We just have to wait and see if they're going to be as stupidly juiced as they are in Path of Exile 1. It's also not clear whether Essence gets its own tree. It wasn't mentioned. So if Essence doesn't have its own tree, it might make it a little bit worse because you can't do things like make Essences a higher tier or get more Essences or any other kind of interactions with it. But I still think it's a mechanic that's worth doing, even if there are no points to invest into a tree. I'm also very excited to see what Simulacrum holds. Even if you can't complete these, they're normally profitable if you can even just get halfway through, and they are a lot of fun. Once my character's half decently geared, I'm going to jump in and see what it's all about. There are some worries I've got in some of these systems in that how many of these splinters are going to drop? Like Breach Splinters, I think you needed 300 for a Breach. Simulacrum, again, like PoE1, you need 300 splinters. So it might be that these just don't come around very often, so it's difficult to gauge what your character's going to need to do to get them completed. But as I say, they are two mechanics I really, really enjoy, and they're definitely the two things I'm going to jump into, and they're the two things I'm going to concentrate on to try and farm some currencies that I can do more crafting, buy gear, whatever I want to do. And then one bonus for me is that void stones seem to not exist anymore. And really they don't serve a purpose. The purpose of void stones was to get your maps to a higher tier so you had more selection of what maps you run. Since the map tier is tied to the blank stone that you put in and the biome that you put it in, there's no need for it. And I'm really glad. I'm not saying it wasn't a good system, but I really didn't like the fact that this was a key part of your atlas. And instead of being tied behind things like atlas completion or map completion, it was tied behind pinnacle bosses and it just felt that you had to do these four, get them out of the way as part of your league start, whether you even liked doing those bosses or not. It just felt a real chore, and I'm really, really glad that mechanic is gone, and I hope it never comes back. Now, there's lots we need to discover in Endgame. I'm sure there's tons of secrets that they haven't mentioned. There's pinnacle bosses. There's just going to be so much more, even in early access, that they haven't touched on, and I'm really excited about jumping in. Let me know what you're planning to do at Endgame, what you want to focus on, anything that excites you, anything that worries you. And lastly, if you find these videos interesting or useful, please leave a thumbs up. It really helps. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and see you in the next one.